we are going into the next presentation. Abul Asar, um, welcome to Funk Prog Sweden. Um, thank you for having me here. You're welcome. Um, uh, is my screen? Yeah. We see you and we hear you loud and well. Yeah, yeah. And now we see your screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, yeah, yeah. First of all, uh, Thomas, the talk was really good. Um, honestly, I have tried um, uh, Elm earlier, but again, the fear of <laughs> the that Elm is dead. Uh, I didn't want it to <laughs> invest much time on it. But honestly, from functional programming um, point of view, it's really a, a great language. I can vouch for that. Like I had tried um, Haskell earlier. And Elm earlier, believe me, uh, even after working for around my start of my career for a very long period of time, I wasn't aware about the uh, concept of curring. But it was Elm that made me understand that uh, what curring and lots of functional programming uh, concept as well as the mathematics behind it, uh, it started to um, uh, make sense when I started learning Elm. It's it's just it's just a sad thing that I didn't invest much time on it, but yeah, surely I'll I'll look into it uh, in future. So yeah, um, starting with the topic, um, the topic of this session is um, displaying uh, current logged in user using Phoenix Presence. Uh, honestly, when I proposed this topic uh, for uh, the meetup. Um, and I saw that advertisement on uh, on Twitter and LinkedIn. I was kind of, after seeing the name, I realized that the top the name is a little bit vague. And when I started to make uh, presentation, the slides, I started to realize that like there are lots of things, lots of concept behind the scene that needs to be covered. So this session will be a mixture of um, a demo, a little bit of demo, uh, lots of slides which i'm really bad at and it will be evident in next few slides and uh, a few of uh, code explanation along the way so let's get started um so a bit about myself my uh, i'm abul asar sayed i'm a software engineer from mumbai india i have near about seven years of experience i have worked on multiple technologies uh, like elixir javascript ruby and um, i'm in love with elixir because of its easy syntax and um, um, and its great community and uh, currently i'm working for a soft us based software company called as id plants which is a real estate company uh, we solve problems related to, we build software related to uh, real estates. And um, uh, we primarily, we have mostly, um, we have JavaScript tech stack along uh, uh, with uh, lots of AWS stuff. You can follow me on Twitter as at Abul, Asar, Abul underscore Asar and on LinkedIn as Abul Asar. And uh, I have... Uh, website ablosa.com where I share a lot even I tweet about that on Twitter uh, whatever I do with the live view and elixir I, sh I like to share my um, my stuff my knowledge whatever uh, small thing or anything I try um, uh, in my free times and all all right so this is the agenda for today uh, like I said uh, uh, this session will be um, mixture of uh, uh, the concept building, the uh, the demo, and uh, so initially at start itself, I'm going to show you guys demo of uh, the application that uh, this session is about. Then a bit about live view to get a little bit intro about live view for those users who are not aware about it. Then channels, topics, then Phoenix pops up. Uh, then adding authentication, a bit of authentication, I'm going to explain why it is needed in this project. And then the meat of the project, Phoenix Presence, and finally code explanation. So let's get started. So uh, first of all, I'm going to give you a small demo. I think uh, uh, this seeing this demo, uh, it's going to make sense like what this topic is about. So here I'm having two parallel browser. One is uh, in, in non-incognito mode and one is in incognito mode. So first of all, I'm going to log in uh, and um, 
with just a very basic simple live view application and over here you can see i'm logged logged in and these are the list of user list of users of this application so i'm abulasa so i'm logged in and you can see green signal over here similarly there is one more user edward who is not logged in right now so you can see red signal uh, red um, notification over here so i'm going to log in as edward now on parallel screen so Keep an eye on the uh, left screen also. So as soon as I'm logged in, you can see the green signal over here. So um, this um, this effect of of updating the screen without explicitly refreshing the screen is what this session is all about. And uh, what I like about Live View is is the uh, it's its feature of real time building real time application with ease and like. Believe me, if when you are trying to build such feature with any other uh, languages like JavaScript or something, you have to go through different types of stuff. But in uh, Live View, you just have to learn Elixir, and you can achieve it with such with with the ease. Uh, similarly, when I'm logging out, you can see I'm logged out and the red signal over here. So I hope you got got the idea what uh, this talk is about. So here you can see. Uh, while explaining uh, you will you have seen some points uh, which i want to highlight is authentication the real time effect the list over what we are seeing uh, here right now this indicator of you uh, the event firing of uh, users login event logged out event all those things are something which uh, will help you in understand uh, the future um, uh, slides Okay, so let's get started. The very first topic, live view. Uh, I think few of um, a few um, um, uh, meetup before there was um, as, uh, there was an um, uh, there there was a um, a talk given by one of the um, um, attendee was about uh, live view, and you can go through that as well. But I thought it should be better to give some glimpse about what live is all about why it came into picture so in traditional um first of all uh, phoenix live is a library that works with phoenix uh to provide real-time functionality with server rendered html so you have seen that proof of real-time thing um how it was um how it was achieved so earlier when live live was not developed um um, in a traditional Phoenix application and in dead view uh, application, uh, uh, whenever users try to um, access and do some event in the page in the browser, for example, user submitting the form and a user just wants to uh, do very small change, like for example, hide some, um, some div on the basis of this uh, submit button. It's just a small change of uh, simple Boolean logic. But uh, how that used to happen is that user user used to submit the form that should that used to trigger uh, HTTP action, uh, HTTP event, which should which would go to controller and controller as per the HTTP verb. In this case, you can say update and uh, some computation used to happen in the controller and that used to uh, Pass the data to the views and views in in return used to return um, entire HTML page. Though this change was a small change, just um, boolean logic from change to false. Say for example, and but uh, but control is returning a huge HTML page. So and that was that is refreshing the entire page for that. So this was not a very good user experience. Along with that, uh, that also. Um, is uh, that also uh, hampers the performance of the application if the page is very happy with lots of CSS and other stuff. So what was the so solution that uh, developed at that time? A um, few years back, we used to came uh, using uh, JavaScript libraries like React, Vue, etc. Uh, by embedding that in in the application for Vue, if you if anyone who are aware about Vue.js, it's very easy to integrate. You just have to tag the div uh, as a uh, part of the your application as a Vue application by adding some tag. Uh, I don't remember the syntax right now, but uh, uh, the same thing uh, user used to submit application and there was a Ajax request, and again controller used to take that Ajax request and 
after computation the view used to return J json response and uh, and uh, update the page uh, the section of the page accordingly but uh, again like uh, the things was achieved like what was the target uh, to instead of rendering the whole page uh, just update the part of the uh, application was achieved but again uh, it comes with a cost like someone who's a back-end engineer who is uh, who is only working on uh, elixir or, um, or in elixir has to now learn um uh, like has to learn JavaScript uh, and uh, um, and uh, framework like React and Vue, React which has a huge learning curve uh, at least for me. And uh, a, a, a backend developer has to learn all those things. And uh, backend engineer already is dealing with uh, the pain of CSS. Now has to learn uh, JavaScript and other JavaScript frameworks. So, uh, so this was the issue, like uh, which uh, mainly Elixir developer or Phoenix developer was were facing at that time. Then Elixir, uh, then Phoenix team, along with uh, 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 along with uh, Chris McCord, uh, they came up with this library called as LiveView, and uh, its concept is really simple. And uh, um, for every page in, in the application, you can have a live view process. And the, the concept is very simple that uh, a live view connection happens over a web socket. And uh, live view has a cycle that the live view process uh, receives some events. And the, those events are handled in the live view process. And uh, after doing some co computation, when we assign that value, uh, to the web socket, only that particular page uh, of the application is ref uh, is is re-rendered. So instead of uh, going through pain of uh, writing JavaScript or rendering the whole page, uh, Live View is solving this uh, this thing with, uh, with 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 the ease. And the best of all, everything is happening over a web socket. So think like uh, uh, real uh, real time building real time application is achieved with and with, with very ease so yeah um the next thing is phoenix channels so um like we have gone through live view what is live is all about now the phoenix channels the phoenix channels is something which using which we can build bi-directional communication between message senders and receiver using channels they are ideal for real-time applications so obviously the um, you can see, uh, and if you remember the uh, the demo of my application, there was information flow that was happening between between the two browsers. So, what was uh, uh, the thing that helped in achieving that is uh, is Phoenix channels. Uh, in in the simplest analogy, what I can give about Phoenix channels is it it's it's a kind of pipe through which information flows uh, in real time. So, it's again uh, the the main uh, hero behind uh, um, uh, Phoenix channels is that uh, you uh, is socket connection again. Like there is a uh, it 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 works in two step. Um, that um, a socket connection is uh, is um, ha uh, happens between the client and the server, and there is broadcasting of message between the senders and the receivers. So there is some more thing to it uh, in the next few slides, which we'll be looking to. It's topics. Um, so, um, like I said in previous slide, um, uh, and to give a simple analogy, I said channels is something which, um, which, which it's a kind of pipe which take information uh, with, through which information is flows. So there should be something uh, um, uh, which should take care of, uh, like where this information should flow. So uh, topics is something. It's uh, it's kind of um it's a kind of thing which helps you to route message so for example um, um there is an information flow uh, like uh, um, messages for example uh, or chat messages we don't want that this particular chat when any user submits any message uh, in group a we don't want that it should uh, uh, that message should get leaked into message um, in, in chat group b so there is a identifier which helps you to achieve that thing, which restricts that this particular message shouldn't be leaked into any other group. So topic is uh, is such thing which um, uh, 
helps you to achieve uh, thing so it's uh, the same client can and also like uh, um, same client can publish to multiple um, topics so say for example um, in, in in a simple analogy uh, uh, same user can belong to multiple groups say for example uh, say i am a user i'm i can be in group one and as well as in group two so i can be subscribed to multiple group as well so topic is something which we, which instead of mixing uh, all those message will be help which it will help in uh, segregating the message and routing it to per, to its perfect uh, destination so the next topic is phoenix pub sub it's the it's the most important concept in phoenix and um, uh, the thing the real time thing what we saw earlier phoenix pub sub uh, was is the thing uh, is an api that is responsible for doing this live updates in the app so it has two parts uh, that is uh, it it involves two entities uh, one is publisher and uh, the other is subscriber so in this diagram if you will see it's kind of makes sense uh, see for example these are the subscriber which are uh, subscribed to this topic so when the publisher publishes the message uh, to a particular topic only those subscriber which are uh, subscribed to this particular topic are going to um, receive message so the very first thing what are publisher so it's kind of very uh, clearly evident that uh, publisher is the producer in the pub sub chain uh, it creates messages so for example this topic is, has got a message um, from uh, uh, from any of the publisher it's going to publish to only those uh, um, um, uh, only those subscriber which are um, subscribed to this particular topic so it it, it is a kind of send, sender so when any event is occurred in the publish uh, pu uh, publisher process it will notify to all the subscriber process throughout throughout the channel so in in live view point of view when i say publisher and subscriber uh, in this everything are processes so um, here we have if i'm talking about um, uh, a page say um, slash or home page if i'm talking about and there is uh, a page for that live view page for that then that's a live view then there's a separate live view process for that and if it is waiting for some data from any source uh so uh so th that is what like uh process like in live view everything is a process so publisher in the simple terms is just is something that is uh, that produces message and same goes to subscribers uh, uh, uh in live view application uh, processes are subscribed to a topic uh, so when a message is is pushed by a publisher is um, broadcasted by a publisher it's, it is um, um, it is um, the subscriber who are going to receive that uh, message so it's quite simple and uh, quite evident in this first diagram itself uh, all right now authentic authenticating authenticating our app so if you are um, the question arises like why i'm trying to explain about authentication in our application so if you will see um, it will uh, the reason behind explaining authentication is that uh, uh, in our demo application what we have seen over here um, we are able to identify user like hey uh, edward is online or abul asar is online this is done on the basis of some identity so this would this would not have been possible if we would we would have not authenticated and it was also act as an identifier to show this red and green signal so in our case to achieve this feature of showing logged in user and logged out authentication was a topic i thought i should be clearing out so uh, in live view authentication is uh, is in phoenix uh, exactly authentication is something very uh, it can be achieved uh, very easily um, um, like in uh, in other frameworks or in other technologies when a user had to or a developer had to write their own 
um, implementation of um, authentication uh, with Phoenix and even with Rails because Phoenix is kind of inspired by Rails, uh, where you have very uh, easy library to um, uh, where you have library using that you can very easily um, implement authentication. So it has a, they uh, in library we have in Phoenix we have a library called as uh, Phoenix Gen Auth. Using that we can very easily install um, uh, authentication in in, a, in this application. All right, and like I said earlier, uh, Phoenix presence is going to use user ID to track users' presence. So in our case, like how you, we are able to identify that AdWord is online is on the basis of the user ID. We will have some logic which will be you know, which will be seen in uh, while the code explanation. Um, using that, I'm able to we are able to uh, um, make this signal green. So Phoenix presence is going to use user ID uh, in, in our case. Okay, so like I said, Phoenix Gen Auth is something that is that comes with the Phoenix library. Uh, so uh, um, you have to explicitly, explicitly install that to use it. So um, when, once your application, you have started building our application, you want to implement, implement Phoenix Gen Auth. Uh, this is the simplest way you can add um, authentication in your application makes run uh, in in your terminal you can run phoenix gen auth accounts is your contacts user is the table which you want to add and users is the uh, user is the table and uses the module um, in phoenix so it it's it's going to have all those function all those logic which are needed uh, to implement authentication believe me you don't have to write even a single line of code after that uh, for the basic authentication even when i created this demo application i didn't write even a single line of code to achieve uh, uh, this authentication so, so it's really cool about the phoenix live view where you um, you you can uh, skip uh, take you can avoid taking tension about authentication stuff now um like like i said once users log in in the application you can see user is uh, um, user is in uh, at the root of the application local host host four thousand user is at the root of the application. So we want um, if for example if I am trying to um, access this in uh, in logged out state, it it is asking me should log in. So what I am trying to do, I'm I have authenticated so that I, uh, once. Uh, if if user is not authenticated in this case, then we we didn't had we we don't have any identity to um, to show user's presence. So that's why we, I uh, I thought of um, authenticating this particular URL. So for that, uh, what we can do, uh, what I have did in this case, I have added this this page uh, slash root uh, empty slash and the home live page i have created a home live uh, um uh, live view file for this page for uh, displaying this page the the live view file is home live and what i did i in router.ex file um i have we can see you will see uh, when you will uh, create your uh, or uh, implement this this thing on your own there is a scope where um, there where you can see this this uh, this block of code live session require authenticated user which ensures that the user is authenticated else you cannot access this page so for example if you will try to access user settings uh, you you will not be allowed to access that why because it is this block of code is making ensuring that uh, uh, user should be authenticated to access this page. So this this block of code is something that came inbuilt when I ran this command uh, mix Phoenix Gen authors. So what I decided I added home live this root page into this uh, block itself to make sure that hey my this page should be authenticated. So this was the point of adding authentication to get to make sure that that page is secure and most most importantly we can get identity of identity of the user to show the logged in and logged out state so far so good now the main um, 
part of the application is Phoenix presence. So it is a behavior that provides presence features such as um, uh, uh, such as fetching presence of a given topic. If you will start to notice this definition, we can see there are lots of things which we have came across like uh, topic. And um, um, in this uh, second point, it uses Phoenix pub sub behind the scene. So we have seen Phoenix pub uh, sub as well. We can see broadcast because it broadcast um, uh, uh, to the message um, um, uh, to update in real time. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's, um, um, it, it is the library, it's Phoenix presents the model that don't come uh, inbuilt in the application. You have to explicitly install uh, using the command mix Phoenix gen presence. I'll show you in uh, the subsequent uh, slides. So, so Phoenix presence is a main thing which is keeping track. Uh, if you will see in the definition, first definition itself again, you can see uh, it, um, uh, it has diffs. Diffs means differences over here. Differences of join and leave event as they occur in real time. So whenever user is joining, logging in, in, in the first uh, first time or uh, when the user is joining the application, there is an event of join. And similarly, when I try to, uh, users try to log out, there's an event of leave. So all those things is happening. And presence is something which keep tab on the, these things. So it is the main, this is the uh, uh, thing which helps in achieving this thing. So presence the big picture. So in this uh, diagram, I'll try to explain uh, like how Phoenix presence work. So I'll start from the bottom. If you will see over here, um, this is um, my browser, Abul's browser, and this is Edward's browser. So in, in my case, I can see Abul is log, log in and uh, Edward is not, assuming uh, Edward is, is not logged in. So whenever, uh, like I said, for every page, um, a live view page, there is a live view process uh, as I explained in the very start of the um, session uh, that every, um, like every live view uh, page we create, there is a live view process for that. So um, uh, there are different hooks in that. So there is one of the hook, which is called as mount. As soon as the um, uh, page is created and and uh, um, in the is created in the um, mount uh, callback, and and that that particular page is connected. Uh, that particular process is connected to WebSocket. At that time, we will try to call a function called as track in presence module. So when we call presence dot track it will and we will pass some parameters which we'll look into next uh, slide and it, we will tell to presence hey um, um, user one has in, in our case the user one is able has uh, logged in uh, in this um, in this live view uh, process uh, please make entry of that so presence will take that thing and it will uh, enter it in, in its list and what but with Phoenix with presence it's not just take uh, that list and note it down in the it passed that thing to PubSub and uh, uh, and ask it to publish. So here in our case we have this users list topic and what uh, this PubSub take uh, uh, does it takes the data from presence and it publishes uh, to this particular topic. So whatever uh, live view processes which are subscribed to this uh, this topic user list is going to receive uh, that hey user one has logged in. So in our case we have to uh, this uh, home live process is is subscribed to user list. So it's going to receive that message uh, that users uh, one has joined. So this this is fine for this process and this this particular browser session but what about the other users who are logged in into the system they are going to receive this message as well so uh, if there are n number of browsers that are connected um, so all those browsers are going to receive uh, 
uh, this message that hey user one is um is available okay so uh, so but the, the, the point is like once uh, the message is broadcast broadcasted by uh, user um, by pubsub you have to handle that thing uh, that message that message that is coming from the pubsub so we have to add a handle callback uh, in the in our library process, which I'll explain you in, in in the code explanation, and accordingly we are going to update the state of the application, and it's going to render that change. So that's the flow uh, of the application. You have to uh, you, uh, on as uh, on loading uh, as far as uh, the process is mounted, you have to notify it to the presence. Presence is going to notify to PubSub and finally PubSub is going to broadcast this message. So that's pretty much uh, the flow of presence, how presence work. All right, so um, in this uh, slide, uh, I have told you that presence track, uh, ask presence process. Uh, about the user which has logged in. So how this track works. So whenever, when we navigate to the root page, we take, uh, we need to track that presence of that users. So uh, we have to notify the presence process using uh, using uh, uh, this presence or track function. We have to notify uh, and pass some data uh, to, the, uh, to the presence uh, uh, process. We have to first uh, uh, pass self or the present model we are talking about in the present process uh, that hey in this process um, um, something has happened so please take track of it and the second thing is the topic topic is also again uh, I'm sorry uh, is also very necessary uh, because on which we want to uh, publish this thing so we have to no notify the topic as well. So here, in our case, it will be users colon list. Uh, I have declared it as a global variable in the function, in the modules. Uh, so um, I have mentioned it as a topic. And in our case, I'm take, keeping track of the presence of the user with their ID. So I'm for the sake of simplicity, I'm just using user.id. And finally is a map. We, we can pass uh, metadata to this function where, um, we can pass other information as well, but here in our case, we don't need anything else. So I'm just uh, passing it as an empty uh, map. All right. So this is the explanation, like what uh, all these parameters mean. Now, this is the final um, code explanation of uh, presence, like how um, things works in our case. Um, like I said, uh, in this uh, slide itself, like uh, the very first thing that is happening as soon as the uh, process, the live view process is connected to WebSocket, we notify presence using the presence or track function. So um, you can see on this line. So I'm checking on over here if connected, if uh, this process is connected, what we have to do, we, we have to notify presence um, using the track function and uh, uh, this thing what we have seen earlier in this function and the first um, the point which i missed out uh, is uh, we have to subscribe uh, to a topic um, our process should be uh, should subscribe to this topic as well so uh, so in our case like when pubsub publishes that hey user one has logged in uh, you should get notified about that as well. So for that, we should be subscribed to that uh, topic. So it's very simple using this line cynic dot pub sub uh, dot subscribe the function for which you have to pass pub sub module as the first parameter and the second parameter as a topics and that's it. And uh, and this in this line socket you are um, uh, we are assigning the list of users so yeah uh, over here um, in this application uh, in our application as you can see i'm rendering the list of users of the application so that is achieved um, by i have uh, fetched all the user of, of the application and just for the demo purpose i'm using this ugly um, fetching of all uh, users um, but 
uh, accordingly you, know, you can optimize as per your requirement so i'm taking that user and i'm assigning it to users variable similarly logged in users so um, in in this um, um yeah over here you can see i have mentioned about presence dot list so similarly you can ask presence um, you can ask presence that uh, if at any point you want to know um, that uh, hey presence what are the users in our applications which uh, are live right now so you can ask presence to uh, using this function presence dot list so over here uh, i am asking i'm to a variable logged in user i'm taking i'm asking present dot list of this topic of this particular user lost uh, uh, colon list i'm um, asking the list of users um, that are present in this particular topic and for now i'm just taking the ids list of user ids and i'm assigning to this variable logged in users and after that it's going as soon as we assign data to socket it get rendered in ui but again as soon as we pass this present dot track or some logged in or logged out uh, event is happened uh, like i said uh, over here uh, that whenever phoenix pops up get event get diffs of um, that user has logged out or user has uh, logged in it notifies to all those subscriber uh, it broadcasts the data and uh, uh, so how it is handled it is handled using this handle info function which has a signature of topic users colon list so, so anything happened in this topic handle info is going to uh, catch um, that uh, difference of data and the event is present stiff and the payload payload is diff so uh, this diff is a is a map which has uh, uh, which has a uh, uh, list of um, users which have left the system and a list of users which have joined the system. So as soon as um, I try to log in and I am logged in into the system, handle info will be called and it will have an array or list of users which have joined the system. So accordingly, you can use that um, list of user and assign it to login user too replicate uh, to uh, to uh, see in effect in your system so this is how phoenix uh, presence work so that's um, that's pretty much about all the those concept behind the system now i'll uh, explain some code behind uh, uh, this uh, all this implementation the um, the very first thing that what i um, i want to show about uh, uh, the home life when I try to authenticate, um, make authenticate the page and restrict uh, the root page from accessing. So uh, what I said that um, after running the command mix phoenix dot gen dot auth, it add this block of code automatically in your system. All right. So when I wanted to, when I added this page root home live, I just moved this line uh, from. Uh, from um, from one of the uh, from here to this this line uh, within this block so it authenticated that uh, particular page so uh, this is the reason behind uh, um, behind authenticate authenticating the root page all right now comes the home live page uh, where uh, like i said you must have seen at the top at the topic at the topic so all uh, had declared over here users list to make uh, uh, this subscribe thing possible as well as the track thing possible again in mount callback you can see uh, as soon as the socket is connected this is the main condition you have to take care about once it is uh, the socket is connected uh, you can uh, publish uh, um, the track um, notify presence process about the change that is happening in the system similarly uh, using when you have when you are subscribed and uh, pub sub publishes uh, the topic that hey user one has joined the system and user two had left the system so all those things are handled in this uh, handle info function so this is uh, um, i i guess uh, this is something i had uh, um, explained earlier 
Uh, this logic, there was some private function that's removed logged in user and add logged in user is kind of chain. I guess this syntax is quite similar to all um, LM guys. Uh, so yeah, uh, so once a user um, is logged in, we can concatenate to the list of existing users. Similarly, when user left the system, we can remove from the existing of log lo logged in users. So this is happening behind the scene. And uh, presence, um, when we wanted to install presence, uh, pre like I said earlier, uh, uh, that Phoenix present doesn't come inbuilt with the system. You have to explicitly install that. So on running Phoenix gen dot auth, um, you, um, it installed this, um, it's installed uh, presence and um, it, uh, it comes in this folder, channels folder present.ex and in this you can see uh, it is uh, installed as an OTP application as it has it is kind of its own application all right and uh, uh, it uses Phoenix pubs up behind the scene so uh, I have explained to you earlier that uh, um, it uses Phoenix pubs up behind the scene so how it is made aware that uh, uh, we should use uh, so this line is making that possible it is we are passing the system uh, phoenix pubs up uh, and uh, also uh, once you try to explain uh, uh, install phoenix presence you also have to make entry um, in in the application so so per, you, you have to add this uh, presence module into the list of supervisors uh, so that uh, list, list of children so that supervisors can uh, take track of it so to take advantage of uh, um, Erlang's uh, concurrency and crashing ability. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much um, um, about this topic. Um, is anyone having any question? Thank you very much. Thank you for a nice presentation. I think it was very well what you showed with uh, both the code and like the diagrams of how things bounce back and forth. I had one question in the chat early on, uh, which yeah. like asked like, how would this work with uh, the live presence, so to say, work with proxies and firewalls? But I guess that the request goes through the HTT port, right? Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so it doesn't matter really proxies, firewalls. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, as far as I know, it, it shouldn't matter. But uh, um, maybe uh, I'm not very good with the uh, networking stuff. But yeah, it's a good topic to be uh, learn about. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's also kind of what I suspected, it uh, or how it should work. Otherwise, it will be, <laughs> be very problematic to get it to work. Yeah, 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 but... yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Another question: How come you come into Elixir? I mean, what languages have you done before Elixir? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, like, uh, initially, I started my career as a front-end developer. Uh, I worked on technologies like Ember.js, uh, a bit of React earlier. Uh, but uh, when I, I was working in my second or th third job, at that time, I was introduced to backend. So I started my backend career as a Rails developer. Mm -hmm. At that time, I came to, I heard about Elixir at that time. And uh, I, I, what I noticed that it has uh, the concept of, uh, it, it syntax is quite similar to Ruby. So that caught my eye. And similarly, at that time, uh, when my, one of my colleague introduced me, he, he used to force me functional programming concept on JavaScript. So at that time, I, out of curiosity, tried to learn about uh, uh, functional programming concepts. And uh, at that time, Elixir also came into picture and I tried to learn Elixir at the time. And uh, professionally, like I wasn't working for any project, but I keep on, uh, I kept on playing with Elixir. And uh, because of that, I got my break in one of the US-based company uh, called a Select Hub, where I started my career as a, uh, Elixir developer and I also do lots of free um, um, blogging about that whatever I learn about and uh, I do some freelancing of Elixir that as well so yeah and that pretty much like my uh, transition into Elixir yeah it sounds like most people are or developers went into Elixir from Ruby or something and then exactly yeah, exactly went over to to Elixir yeah yeah um 
Yeah, people are applauding in the chat, saying thank you very much for a very nice presentation. A question: the code you showed, will will, will you show it? Uh, will you share it or? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't uh, created GitHub repo of that, but I'll surely add it uh, add it in the comment, and also I'll share the slide as well if yeah. it's worthy enough. <laughs> Absolutely, do it. Share the slide, share the code, and uh, we will publish them uh, in the in the comments below, in the videos below, and people can check them out if they're interested. We'll also share the, the your contact details if people want to get in contact with you. Yeah, so again, thank you very much for your very nice presentation and the late thank time you, it must be in uh, India where you're from right now. Yeah, where you're sitting. Yeah, it's 11:30 p.m. Yes. here in India. <laughs> yes. So with that, thank you very much. And uh, thank you everyone for watching tonight or if it's early morning in, in the west coast of US. So thank you very much, everyone. And again, I would also like to point out if you have a user group that you are running and you want to say hello that you are looking into Funk Pog Sweden, just ping me and we'll put you on in the start of a, another meetup. With that said, thank you everyone and have a nice evening. Goodbye.